what's up, y'all? I said, what's up, y'all? Look at me when I'm talking to you, bro. Nah, I'm just messing with y'all, man. This is Knockout Boxing 86 TV, and we in here. So check this out, bro. Before I get going on today's video, everybody should know what to do by now. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video, hit the notification bell, and comment down below, bro. Put your seatbelt on when you hop in my car. And if you want me on the panel, knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com is the email. Um, and, you know, let's get it popping. Let's get into today's show. We got a lot to talk about, bro. We got a shit ton to talk about. We're doing the Jamel Charlo, Brian Cristiano fight prediction. Plus, I'm going to react to the weigh-in that I just saw, bro. So, we got a lot to talk about. But before I get into that, man, listen, bro. Live show. This upcoming Wednesday, July 21st, 7.30 p.m. Central. 5.30 on the West Coast, 8.30 on the East Coast. Y'all come hang out with your boy, bro. Come hang out with me, man. It's going to be a great show. I'll let y'all know on the community page what the topic of the show will be about and continue to give you updates and continue to remind you guys to come check out the live show this upcoming Wednesday. But let's break it down, bro. Before we get into the fight prediction, the weigh-in was lit, bro. Listen, if you... If you ain't watched the, the weigh-in yet, bro, I, I don't, you know, I'm a boxing fan. I like the actual fight, bro. But weigh-ins sometimes get turned. And this one was turned, bro. The energy was all the way on 10. Bro, some, like, Jamal Charlo, you know, Jamal's twin brother, the middleweight champion of the world. Somebody from Castano's camp set him off, bro. It was Castano's manager, they're saying, who also was Marcos Madonna's manager, bro. But, bro, he said Jamal Charlo off, and Jamal turned into Jamal, bro. Jamal wanted to fight on the stage, bro. They had to be separated. They had to hold him back. I never thought I'd say Jamal was the calm one, bro. Jamal was the calm one. But, bro, man, go watch the way in, bro. It was absolutely positively very fun and makes, makes me even more excited for the fight, bro. And then when Jamal and Castano faced off, for those of y'all that try to be body language experts, Castano turned away first, but Castano was smiling. He seemed confident. Jamel had that killer look on his face like he ready to kill something. And he was talking to Castano and talking to Castano team after the um after the weigh-in. And both of the teams was getting heated. Um, you know, Jamal Charlo was heated, really, really amped up. Usually he the one that's calming Jamel down. Jamel had to calm him down. But they was turnt, bro. The way in was lit, man. I can't wait for tomorrow, bro. But let's do the fight prediction because that's what y'all came here for, right? That's what y'all came here for, man. Who you picking? Don't wait for me to pick who you picking. You don't want to tell me, man. Let's go ahead and break it down, bro. Tell of the tape. Jamel Charlo out of H-Town, bro. Houston, stand up. My fellow Texas brethren, stand up, bro. The unified super welterweight champion, bro. 31 years old, 5'11", 73-inch reach, 34-1 record, that one loss, he avenged that shit. He avenged that shit, and that's a controversial loss. You have some people believe that he should be 35-0, and 0, but he avenged that loss, bro. And he's a complete fighter, you know. He got 18 knockouts of his 34 victories, and he's knocked out seven of his last eight opponents, bro. That power is becoming to get real since he got with Derrick James. For Brian Castano, he fighting out of Argentina. They was in there crunk too, going back to the weigh-in. Them Argentina boxing fans was in there waving their flags, beating their drums, letting people know, we here. We are here. But Brian Castano out of Argentina, 31 years old. He's 5'7". He has a 67 and a half inch reach. He has an undefeated record of 17 wins, no losses, and he has one drop. That draw was against Eris Landy Laura. He has 12 knockouts, bro. He has 12 knockouts. This is a champion versus champion, undisputed fight. This is what boxing is about, bro. And it's an undisputed fight in the most competitive um, division in boxing, in my opinion, with the most parity, bro. Where all the top guys fight each other and all the top guys is not much separation. Right now, Jamel Charlo is the king of this division. And Brian Castano coming to take the crown, bro. Let's talk about their fighting styles, bro. Brian Castano, he's a pressure fighter. But at the same time, bro, it ain't what you think. It ain't no pressure fighter plotting forward with no defense, no athleticism, no hand speed, no flair to his game. 
That ain't Castano, bro. He a pressure fighter that, yes, he coming forward. You know what he doing, but it's showing you different angles, right? It's, it's having good hand speed, putting punches together, right? The feet, they athletic. He ain't just stepping in, plotting in. He shuffling on your ass, cut the ring off, jump in on your ass, jump out, then jump back in, pressure your ass. Very, very good amateur background with over 180 amateur victories. Beat guys in the amateurs like Devin Trinko, Earl Spence. Castano can fight, bro. Castano can fight. He bringing the fight to Charlo, bro. Jamel Charlo's fighting style, he's one of the few. One of the few complete fighters. When I say complete fighter, fight off the back foot. Fight off the front foot, good hand speed, good power, solid defense, athletic, all the tools that, you know, good ring IQ, can follow a game plan from his coach. Jamel Charlo can do it all inside of the boxing ring. He started off as just a cerebral boxer that was a good counter puncher that would outpoint you. You know, because when you see 18 knockouts and 34 victories, you're like, okay, maybe he got a little pop, but this guy can't really hit hard. You sadly mistaken. He's the type of fighter, and what's dangerous about him is that he continues to get better, bro. As he has stepped up in, in competition, seven of his last eight fights, which were all for titles, he knocking dudes out, bro. He winning by knockout against high level, high level competition. You know what I mean? So great matchup. Great, outstanding matchup. Couple of keys to victory and some more intricacies that I see for Brian Castano. This fight is about distance for him. Because he only has one way that he can win this fight. If he wins this fight, it's going to be because he dictate, dictates the pace. It's going to be because he forces Jamel Charlo to fight an inside fight for the majority of the fight. And because Castano doesn't get caught going in or coming out. He doesn't get caught trying to make his way in. And he doesn't get caught trying to get out of exchanges. And he's the busier fighter. He has to fight this fight on the inside. If Jamel Charlo is able to keep, keep him at a distance and land his shots from mid-range to long-range, he's a, he's a better fighter than Castano from those distances, in my opinion, because of the power, because of his reach, and because of, um, because of how explosive he is. Castano has to get inside because getting inside, uh, that's what he do best, number one. But also, number two, it gives him a better chance of smothering Jamel Charlo's punches and taking some of the pop off of those punches. So his key is getting inside, bro, which a lot of you probably already know. For Jamel Charlo, he is going to have to use that jab, which he has a very good jab, work it down low, work it up top. He's going to have to control distance. And when he gets inside, if he don't like what he see, he got to tie Castano up to not let Castano use that busy work rate. And he has a great left hook combination that he throws, does Jamel Charlo, which is where he starts the left hook down to the body, and then he brings it up top. That up top one will put your lights out. Go ask Tony Harrison about it, bro. Go ask Tony Harrison about um, Jamel Charlo's left hook to the body, left hook up top combo. Go ask him about it. For, um, for Castano... One thing I want to see from him that I see a flaw in, bro, is um, uh, but but Jamel Charlo's flaw first. His flaw is if you want to fight, he'll fight you, and he can't he can't fall into that shit with Castano. He can't try to show Castano how tough he is by saying I'm gonna fight you on the inside and making it a more difficult fight for himself. Can he pull off a fight like that? He has the ability to, but I would I would advise against it. You want to make the fight as easy as possible for yourself. So if you're Jamel Charlo, don't listen to that. And you can see it in the way in today, bro. He ready to go. He ready to go to war. He want to fight. And Castano and his team are trying to use that, in my opinion, to make him just fight an all-out war with Castano because that's where they know Castano's strengths lie. And that's his chance to win the fight. He's fighting on the inside and going to war. Charlo could probably win a fight like that, but it just makes the fight harder for him. So he has to use his innate advantages, bro. Use that length. Use that jab. Catch him with that vicious right hand that you got. When you're on the inside, if you get your one or two good shots in, you got you to gotta hold on. Keep Castano from being busy. That's what he going to have to do. Not listen to that inner lion in him as he says, you know, lions only. 
not listen to that and just want to go to war and go toe to toe and bang it out with Castano. For Castano, one thing I see, his head movement starts off pretty good. But as the fight goes on, as he gets in his groove, he has a tendency to square up and he has a tendency to not move his head as much. And that's danger time against a fighter with the timing and the explosiveness of Jamel Charlo. So for him, you got to keep that head moving. And as we said, push Charlo's ass back, bro. Push him back. Can he fight off the back foot? Yes. But that's your way to victory. That's all you can do because Castano, to me, he can't fight going backwards like that, bro. He just can't. And when you fight going backwards, you're usually relying on time and you're relying on your reach. And he just don't have it, bro. He just don't have it. What do I see happening? Who am I picking in this fight? I got to say it, bro. Let me take a sip because it's a tough pick, bro. Wasted a little bit there, y'all. Excuse me, bro. H2O. I'm picking Argentina, bro. I'm picking Argentina. Brian Castano, bro. I'm picking him. I'm picking him to be sad, bro. I'm picking the whole country to be sad tomorrow night, bro. They're going to be sad. You know why they're going to be sad? Because Jamel Charlo is going to win this fight, and he's going to win the fight by knockout, bro. Castano is a warrior. He got a chin and all of that shit. The matchup, in my opinion, is just all wrong. See, I believe it's certain fighters that the more you test them, the more you bring to them, the more greatness you bring out of them, bro. And while I've been critical of Jamel Charlo's comments regarding racism, while I've been critical about the way that he acts and behaves in press conference, talking about he got shooters, what I can't criticize is the man inside that ring, bro. And let me tell y'all, excuse me, let me tell y'all something, bro. Jamel Charlo is go, it's gonna look similar to Rosario, but it could be an even better performance because Castano got a chin. Because he's gonna be able to show more of what he can do, bro. And Castano gonna bring it. He's gonna be a warrior. He's gonna be some tough moments in the fight for Charlo, but I think he's gonna get through him, bro. It's just certain people. Pressure makes diamonds, but it also busts pipes, right? But Jamel Charlo is that diamond that pressure makes, bro. He, he he just has too many advantages in this fight, bro. The jab, the length, the explosiveness, bro. The 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 coaching, in my opinion. No disrespect to Castano. He come from a fighting family. But I just don't believe you can give a Derrick James coached fighter this many advantages. You can't let him have the reach. You can't let him have the explosiveness. You can't let Derrick James have the more complete fighter. Now, part of the reason that Jamel is so complete is because of Derrick James, obviously. But it's just, I don't think it's going to end well for Castano because he, while he's a great fighter and while he does a lot of things very well, he's easy to game plan for, bro. Like, you know what he going to do. It's like having somebody in basketball that's athletic as shit that's, that can dunk on your ass, that can make layups, but you know that they always got to go right. You know they always got to go right, so they can be athletic as hell, but you can shut them down. You can beat them because all you got to do is keep them from going right, bro. It's the same thing with Castano. Yeah, bro, he got a high work rate, all right? Yeah, he got good feet. He got, he, he, he got good feet. He athletic. All of that shit, bro. But you know he got to come to you because you got a six-inch reach advantage on him. You four and a half inches taller than him, bro. So if you Charlo and Derrick James, you know he got to come to you. And he also, bro, I said it earlier, he also, his head movement slows down later in fights, bro. I'm telling y'all, he beat the shit out of Tixera, but Tixera was able to land some shots, bro. And he was able to land some shots because Castano becomes more aggressive as the fight goes on. And his head movement, I don't know if it's because he gets tired or he just gets in the zone, but he abandons his head movement as the fight goes on, bro. And so I don't think his defense is as strong as, 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 as it should be, bro. Because he's so focused on that aggression, that output, that um, being able to, being able to, to, to just dog walk you and, and outwork you. He's not doing that shit to Jermail Charlo, bro. I'm telling y'all. 
And so what I see happening, I'm picking the late stoppage because I see Jamel catching him coming into or catching him going out of an exchange, bro. I think Jamel Charlo is going to keep the fight in the middle of the ring, use his jab, use his boxing skills, keep his back off the ropes. When Castano get in real, real close, he going to tie him up, make him reset, get back to the distance that he like. And eventually, bro, because of Castano's, you know, lack of head movement sometimes, and eventually because of Jamel Charlo just being such a complete and such a great fighter, he going to catch him with some shit that's going to hurt him. And Jamel Charlo, when he hurts you, bro, it's a wrap. You understand what I'm saying? And so I think he's going to win by knockout. I'm going to pick a knockout in the ninth round, bro. Knockout in the ninth round. If it's a little later or a little sooner, I won't be surprised. One thing's for sure, Jamel Charlo going to win this fight tomorrow, bro. That's what I'm putting my money on. Y'all let me know what y'all pick is down in the comment section, bro. Comment down below. Hit the like. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video. Put your seatbelt on when you hop in the car. Hit the notification bell. All of that shit, bro. And if y'all want me on the panel or you want to collaborate, knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com is the email. I appreciate all of y'all watching the video. Um, and also, oh, the live show. Don't forget, live show this upcoming Wednesday, um, July the 21st. 7.30 p.m. Central Time, 5.30 on the West Coast, 8.30 on the East Coast. Y'all come kicking and hang out with your boy as we do You Got Knocked the F Out, Episode 3, bro, our live show. Come check it out, man. I appreciate everybody watching. Enjoy the rest of y'all day. And with that, we out here, y'all. Peace.